Last week, I went to the elementary school, and I put a question to them. I said, if you could have your parents' credit card for one day, and you could purchase anything you wanted in the whole world, what would it be? I remember the first response from a kid in grade two. He said, a Bakugan. I said, a Baku what? I have no idea what that is. They had to explain. A Bakugan, okay, it's this a toy that starts out in a ball and then transforms into a cool creature. So a Bakugan. So then I said, how much? Okay, $15. Okay. Some other classes were a little more, uh, a little more big in their guesses of what they wanted. You know, one kid said, a Lamborghini. Okay, how much? You know, 250000 Okay. One kid said, a, a mansion. Okay, how much? You know, maybe five million. And, and one of the kids said, an island. Okay, now we're going to like, I don't know, maybe 50 million. So I started making this list on the whiteboard for everyone. What they wanted, how much. And then I wrote you. Y-O-U. I wrote you. And I said, how much are you worth? How would you answer that? How much are you worth? Some of the kids were funny, you know, you know, seven ninety nine, hundred dollars, a million, a trillion. What would you answer? I don't know. Maybe your bank account statement, or just a big question mark. One kid said. I'm priceless. And I was about to agree with them. But then I remembered. And I showed them an image of the crucifix. I said, you're actually not priceless. You are worth a great price. You are worth the death of Jesus Christ. Today's gospel, we heard the most famous quote in all of Scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. We hear this quote so often. We see John 3.16 at sporting events. But have we ever allowed this Scripture passage to change our lives? It's as though the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're up in heaven, okay? They have all the angels around them. And God the Son says to God the Father, he looks down upon the world, and he says, that's what I want above all, all of them. I love them. I want them. That's the one thing I want. He says to his Father, how much? Father says they, they sold themselves. Adam and Eve sold the whole race into slavery to the devil. He says, but I want them. That's the one thing I want. I'll do anything. What can I do? I want them. And God the Father shows God the Son an image of the crucifix. The crucifixion, the whole scene of what he would have to do to buy back the human race. And God the Son says, does that include Richard? Yes. Does that include Scholastica? Yes. He says, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. For God so loved Richard that he gave his only begotten son, so that if Richard believes in him, he may not perish but may have eternal life. We have to insert our names into this passage. I remember the first time in my life in which I was looking at the crucifix 
and it no longer became just something that I was used to seeing, but I realized that he did that for me. For God so loved the world, for God so loved Richard, that he gave his only son. It was as though, you know, on a crucifix, you see the writing I-N-R-I above Jesus, which stands in Latin for Jesus Nazarenix Rex Judeorum, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. It was as though it changed from I-N-R-I to Richard. I inserted my name in there. That's the price that he paid for me and for you so that you may not perish but may have eternal life. We have to allow this scripture passage to change our lives. Uh, an app that I've been using a lot recently is called the One Minute Pause. One Minute Pause. Highly recommend you download this prayer app. And they have these different uh, prayer exercises, one, three, five, and 10 minutes. And during the 10 minute pause, there's uh, options halfway through about what you wanna pray about. And one of the options is to pray about love. And John Eldridge, who started this app, he says this quote, and this is what I got all the elementary school kids to do. And this is what I'll get you to do today as well. John Eldridge says, I am worth the death of Jesus Christ. That's how much God loves me. And then he invites everyone, if you feel okay with it, to say it out loud. So I got like six people with me so they can say it out loud with me. I am worth the death of Jesus Christ. That's how much God loves me. Anytime we look at a crucifix, especially during Lent, that is what we should be saying. I am worth the death of Jesus Christ. That's how much God loves me. And one of the goals of our Lent should be to be overwhelmed by how much God loves me. Imagine if you could reach the end of Lent and you would look at a crucifix and be overwhelmed by how much God loves you. That's a good Lent. One of the ways that we can do this is to proclaim this truth, to, to spend time looking at a crucifix, this Lent. And just keep saying this over and over again. I am worth the death of Jesus Christ. That's how much God loves me. If there's a resistance in your heart to say this, you need to say it more and more and more. And keep proclaiming this truth until it changes your heart. Because when you can internalize this truth, It'll change your actions. God's after your heart this Lent. He's not after your actions. He's after your heart. Because when he can change your heart, when you can internalize this truth, I am worth the death of Jesus Christ. That's how much God loves me. You're going to want to change your actions. You're just going to want to change your life. Because you're so sure and so secure in God's personal love for you. So I invite you during this Lent to really spend some time just gazing at a crucifix, see your name written above, and proclaim this beautiful truth that God so deeply desires each one of you to say out loud. Say it like you mean it. Say it from the bottom of your heart. Allow it to transform your life this Lent. I am worth the death of Jesus Christ. That's how much God loves me.